Okay, at this time I'll call the July 10th, 2014 Dixon County Commission meeting to order. If you could please stand for the flag salute and join in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, I understand there's no additions to the agenda. No. So wait, I wait, isn't there items for addition to the current agenda? I'm sorry. On Brad's sheet? Yeah. Oh, no, that. that's for next week. I'm sorry. I've for, the wrong place. Oh, okay. So that's for future. Yeah. Okay. I'll, it would be for future. I slid it. Okay. Okay. Thanks, though, for bringing that up. Okay, I would go ahead and make the motion we approve the agenda as printed. Second. We have the motion and the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of July 3rd work session and regular meeting. And that's it for the... So moved. Okay. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second for approval of the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll now go to Commissioner Re comments and reports and Craig if you'd lead us off please yeah uh, last uh, 4th July I came up and attended the uh, Abilene Band concert uh, I thought it was excellent uh, I believe that the uh, I just can't think of the gentleman's name the director but 130 second year that they've had a community band Toby Wise Hour mm. yeah yeah uh, I thought it was excellent fireworks display was about 20 minutes thought it was real good uh, Senator Moran, Lynn, and I were over at the uh, Senior Center uh, from 8 to 9, and he got there a little before. I did ask him about the HOPE mail service, mm -hmm. and there's nothing he can do. Postal Service is an independent agency, so he can't do nothing about it. That's just what he told me. <laughs> so it's a, well, we'll have a follow up on yeah, that. Well, no, like I said, I, yeah, he said. I mean, I, I, mean, I think he can. You know, make a strong suggestion and, and yeah. so on. But there's and, nothing he can do. <laughs> but as far as having control to say, yeah. this is what I want done, um, they're, they are independent. Yep. Yeah. I guess I will do blunt there. Well, no, but I mean, yeah, I think that's, that's what, the long that's, short. That's, that's what he told me that there's, you know, that Craig, there's nothing we can do. He can't an solve it agency. for us, yeah. yeah. So. Are you sure? No, uh, uh no. No, no, go ahead. Now, uh, well, and like I said, we, you and I both attended uh, the French for yeah. picnic. Uh, thought it was excellent. And then I've also had contact with uh, Dennis King from Manchester uh, with some open meeting violations in the city of Manchester and uh, forwarded on to Brad and working through that. That's all. Oh, and there's nothing on a computer for any, any email. Uh, one of Senator Moran's aides is Margaret, and uh, she had called me some time back and was wanting some information on this postal delivery out there at Hope in the rural area. And I talked to her, and uh, she did call me back yesterday and said that they had contacted a person in Omaha branch, and that person was willing to her knowledge to get that that person was going to get in contact with with Jerry Coleman and see if they couldn't work something out and then I told her I said well that's fine but it's not just Jerry Coleman's problem it's the entire route that they cut off that's a, the problem too it's not just her but anyway she said that person that she had talked to in Omaha was if they made some contacts and made any decisions they'd get back to her and she said she'd let me know so I don't know that it's completely dead in the water but anyway that, that's what she said I didn't say it was dead in the water I just said Jerry said he couldn't do anything about it <laughs> well <laughs> apparently they have done something right but I mean but there's nothing they can they do they can't legally force them to right no, I guess that's but, what I was but anyway He's in kind of the same position we are. I, I mean, we can try to assist those that are, uh, we, 
have that yeah. problem, but we don't have a jurisdictional type. Right. We feel it's a disservice to those people that that they've done what they've done as far as cutting them off the, the route. But anyway, we, we'll see if I hear anything back. She said she she was kind of waiting to see if they would hear anything back. So, uh, yeah, Craig and I did attend the. We, we thought the turnout at the uh, Friends of the, of the 4-H banquet was well attended this year and, and uh, was very good. I am going to be in the Harrington Parade is kicks off this afternoon and I'm going to go over to Harrington be in the parade and, and take in some of their activities over there. It, it sounds like the next few days because I've got a granddaughter that wants to be over there so I might be... Like take say, your wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, the uh, yeah, I guess yeah, that was it. Okay, um, I also attended some of the Fourth of July activities in the park, and I thought um, Abilene Park and Rec and uh, Jane Fultz did a tremendous job on that. Um, had a son-in-law and, and granddaughter and daughter from Solomon participated in it and you know that's one of the things that I noticed is there's a lot of people come back that are from the you know Dixon County area that come back for that event and it's kind of a family type thing and, and then like Craig like you mentioned the, uh, the activities all through the day um, including the, the fireworks and municipal band and you know, the park is beautiful out there if someone wants to just take a walk there around the fountain and and uh, and so on. So um, it, I'm glad I didn't have to participate in that volleyball. That was <laughs> a little more fun to watch. Than, um, and as Craig mentioned, uh, Senator Moran was over at Chapman, and I don't know, there were maybe 30, 35 people there. Um, mostly from Chapman or, or close to Chapman and um, you know Jerry Senator Moran spoke highly of Chapman uh, as being just kind of a unique small town and you could tell he had been there a few times he seemed to recognize a lot of people by name um, and, um, and and you know they just covered lots of issues I mean he made some comments but he also had the question and answer so things about the VA and and you know some political subjects and some just on legislative type issues, you know, came up. Um, I am going to be on vacation next week, so I'm going to miss the meetings. So, um, you know, we will, I guess, show up tomorrow, 8 o'clock, for a continuation work study as far as budget and trying to get that thing pinned down a little bit more exact. Uh, when I do return, there's going to be a Central Kansas Mental Health Board meeting on Monday, the 21st, and um, and then I signed up for the parade uh, here for Central Kansas Free Fair, and and Laverne, I know you're going to be in that yeah, too. Yeah, I'm so. also going to be in in that thing. Great. You know, you have more experience with parades, though, now that yeah. You know. Well, like I say, uh, probably open enterprise during the summer used to have. Some kind of events going on too. So, yeah. okay, and that's really all I have. And so, um, if there's no other comments, we'll go on to uh, Brad. If you give your county administrative report. Sure. Uh, we have received a resignation from one of our staff in the 911 uh, department, and so we'll be replacing that position. Uh, we do have. Russ tells me that for the last round of interviews, he had an applicant that was very uh, appealing, and so he hopefully will not have to advertise and go ahead and go through that process. So if that person's still interested, he wants to contact them and get them in. So, uh, and that change is due to the uh, employee's husband is leaving the area, changing jobs, and so she's following him. So it wasn't because she wanted to change jobs, but that happened. So. Just a brief update on a project out of Rock Springs Ranch. One of those guys had been out uh, earlier this week. They were able to drive some piling on one side of the the uh, 
bridge and or putting some uh, got that drove in good and there was a question whether or not that would work right but they got the piling in and we've got uh, got that underway and he thought today they'd start laying decking on that and so it's it's going as we had hoped it would go so rock springs personnel are helping do some some work out there as well around the area that helps expedite things and save us some some effort and funding so that's all good so hopefully here within a week or so we'll have that thing back open where they have a usable bridge so uh, this week marked the date of Tuesday marked the date of our purple wave auction we had the two dump trucks so we declared surplus and then the expedition from EMS uh, the expedition brought forty eight hundred dollars it's a 2005 model and then the two dump trucks one of them brought forty three hundred the other one brought thirteen thousand the one with the salt spreader and the, and the snow cloud brought thirteen thousand so a total of twenty-two thousand one hundred dollars in surplus stuff, so it's not a tremendous amount, but as we said a little bit ago on the budget meetings, every little bit helps. So uh, the roof out of the transfer station, uh, that little contentious issue, we <coughs> awarded that bid the second time to Wildcat Roofing. They completed that late last week. We have been out and inspected it. We're completely satisfied with the, the work and the quality of work, and so. Just to give you the, the update on that, that project's done. So hopefully our roof is good to go for another 40 years like the first one was. So. Uh, we had, I think I told you, we sent letters to two property owners up in town each about some violations of our, of our sanitary code. Uh, one of them is an old burned out structure that has had growth up around it and been left to just go wild. The other one is a, a location that has cars in the front yard and tires and things and uh, we sent letters to both of those parties uh, they both refused to accept certified letters so we're having the sheriff serve them, serve them. Uh, so but we're in the process of getting that so the time frame can start and give them 30 days to get it cleaned up or else we take legal action so the hope landfill i mentioned to you i think last week that we we're working on that i did provide you in your packet just for purposes of reading material you can look at uh, after the meeting but john goff had provided me with some background information on that it's very very beneficial to kind of understand where we are uh, in a nutshell uh, when you cut through the chase at the end of the day uh, we're going to be we're going to need to drill a couple monitoring wells down there uh, we've got the prices on that from the well service. It's not going to be exorbitant. Uh, we're looking at if we do two or three up, maybe five or six thousand dollars. But we agreed back in the 70s that we would make sure we had monitoring wells in place. Uh, it's a small fee, I think, to make sure we honor our agreement and make sure that we don't have any contamination from that landfill. So we'll be working on that and, and making sure we are in compliance with PDHE. So. Uh, let's see. A question on that, Brad. I'm, I'm just reading. I didn't have a chance to read through this before. Uh, how deep they're going to? I mean, I'm, I'm probably in here. How deep they're going to have to go? Well, the wells that are there are all about less than 40 feet deep. Okay. So we're not talking deep wells. There, I was reading that information from John and the geological information from back in the 70s shows that there's a pretty substantial shelf about 40 feet deep. So it shouldn't be any deeper than that. In other words, it wouldn't of, travel the water. The, what contamination wouldn't travel down into the, yeah, the groundwater? What they said in okay. the geological information, there's no way it can get through that shelf to start. Okay. And from what we have seen so far in all indications, we don't think there's water down to 40 feet. That's why the, the wells that are there are dry. Right. So. What, are we going to drill more wells to see if there's any water well, there? Well, if we drill down and there's nothing there, then there's not a lot we could do. But it helps substantiate our claim that if there's no water there, it's hard to contaminate it. Okay. Right. So, I mean, right now the question exists, is there water there? Right. Uh, and the water that was in the other ones has slowly dissipated over the years, and there's a question whether or not that water was residual from when they drilled the wells to start with and just laid down there and finally, you know, absorbed or dried up, or whether it was actually a source of water. Now, we have a water well down there, and we haven't checked it. It's by the building. It's not out by the by the uh, yeah the pits, but it's I think 70 or 80 feet deep, uh, and I don't know what I, at the time it was providing 10 to 15 gallons 
Yeah. So we'll, if I'm reading this right, 66 foot deep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Was the case of 60, 75. So but yeah. we don't we don't know what the monitoring wells are yielding to yeah. under so. And it was tested for arsenic in '86. And nothing occurred. There was nothing. Okay. So to kind of protect ourselves and right. make KDHE happy and you know do our due diligence. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll drill a couple and see you know we'll make sure they're on site with us or they've yep. got somebody on site and if they're happy with what we're doing. Okay. Go from there. So. I also provided you a list here, a, a kind of a fact sheet that I would like to get the purpose for on the, uh, the tax sales tax issue is once we get it fine-tuned and finished, I'd like to put something like that on the website and then make some handouts or some publications that we can hand out about the, the sales tax issue that we're talking about. I also included a listing Martin and John and I went through and put a, a a draft list against the township board members together that we thought might be good to get together on a committee to help support that if they'd be willing to. So if you guys would look at that and then drop me an email or something, if you see somebody that you don't think would be good on there or you know somebody that might be, I'm sure we won't get them all, so we would figure if we could get eight or ten, we'd be doing good. So, but those are people that we felt like were fairly active in their communities and were well respected. <laughs> And uh, you know, this is down the road. I mean, we're gonna have to get on it right away. But would we want to take these people around, you know, the people do and, and view some of the bridges and stuff? Would that be, or do we want to take pictures? Brad, well, what I was what I was anticipating, and I hadn't really got into too yeah, much details I mean. and get some feel from you guys. But I think at the very least, maybe have a meeting and go through. I think we could do the majority of it by by photo because we've got good files and photos of everything. Right, right. Talk about our budget issues, what we're facing. Uh, and then if they want to go out and look at a couple of them, it would be certainly, you know, easy to do that. And, yeah. and certainly. Well, and, 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 and I'm visual, so I mean, I, I like going out and, you know, not that we have to go with Old County, but, you know, right. somewhere around close if we could. To pick out a couple yeah. of the best representation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That would best represent yeah. the, the situation we have, so. Yeah. Because it's, and John kind of commented earlier, something that resonated with me is driving across them, they look yeah. great, but when you look underneath them, that's where the real yeah. issues are. Okay. And uh, so, but if we work something out, have an evening meeting, maybe feed them, get them there, it tends to be popular and be a small expense to try and yeah. get that process going. So, but we will have to do something uh, real quick. Yeah, like right. that John, John and <clears throat> Martin's report this morning, you know, that just verifies the need that we're going to have in the future for these, to keep uh, these. Bridges repaired or fixed or mm -hmm. replaced when they when, uh, we need to. Yeah, it's not an issue of whether or not it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how soon. And we know it's we know it's an issue. So I think being proactive and staying on top of it's going to be what saves us. So. We also continue to work on I'm working on the right of way uh, issues down at Rock Springs as part of that agreement. You know, we agreed they agreed that. Yeah. We would clean that up, so I'm working on the legals on that, and also uh, going out and working on the legal over at Old 40 Eaton Road on the bridge we replaced there several years ago. We had to purchase some right away in there in the creek area, and I've talked to one of the property owners out there. He would like to go ahead and clean the some of it. There's a big cottonwoods falling over and things like that. There's really no need for us to retain that that right of way that goes on out past the standard right of way. So I think if we could just vacate that. It would automatically go back to the property owners like a standard vacate, and everybody would be happy. So, uh, so I'm working on that as well. So, and I mentioned to you earlier we received a preliminary option study from Cobb Valley regarding the bridge over on Old 40 at uh, 257 Old Highway 40, and we've instructed Cobb Valley to continue and proceed with the permitting process on that, uh, so that we can get that moving forward. And with any luck. Early next year, when Martin and his crews will be able to get in and replace that, that narrow bridge. So, and next week I will have the uh, solid waste plan for 2015 for you to uh, approve to go under the state. So, that's all I've got. Okay. We'll go ahead and move to uh, notices and communications. I've received a letter or uh, an envelope from the Kansas Association of Counties, and they have three copies in here. 
Uh, this is their research report for the county support for local health departments. And uh, so there's one for you, Laverne and Craig. Also a research report on the demographic and taxation report for the state of Kansas. And this is kind of helpful because it does give a comparison to, to uh, what various counties are doing. And uh, we can kind of see how we match up or fit in with the other counties. Uh, also received a packet. This is just on concrete buildings and something they send out um, to the counties in case we're considering any building. Um, also, the newsletter from KU Works, which is, and their main article is keeping Kansas businesses in business. Um, we also have our report from the clerk of the district court, and uh, it's just that of a monthly report for our review. And we have our county uh, newspaper that always comes through. And just one of these or two are not opened yet. This is from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, and probably just a notification. It looks like uh, this is in regards to the Dixon County Sewer District Number Three in Detroit, and um, it's just a response to discuss the current low water levels um, in their lagoon there. So uh, it has some options on the residents um, that they can do to take care of it. Kind of interesting, it says one of the options is to encourage residents to use more water, and then it says this option is not encouraged. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of threw me there at first. I thought, why would you encourage them to use more water? But, um, but, but anyway, it's just to address that issue. And um, Brad, I'll let you have a copy of this, or have a copy. I'm not sure if it needs to be posted or not. And we've got one other here from K-State Research and Development. And I don't know. Otherwise, this would just be it. And it's um, just greetings to the Dixon County 4-H supporters. And so it's some information about the uh, auction that they're having. Uh, the premium auction, and and also if we would want to have a uh, livestock sale of bill faxed or sent to us, and there's a reply card for that. Laverne or Craig, do you have anything that you would have received that I never heard that, or anything you would want to share? Uh, yes, I got a letter inviting the uh, county commissioner to sit on a. Uh, and I should brought this up in public comments. Uh, the Historical Society is doing a uh, study on their building down there, and I've been invited mm -hmm. to. Or maybe you have to so you'll take care of that as yeah. They, yeah they invited me, the county commissioner, to to be on a. Uh, uh, let's see what. Uh, he interviewed a nature sport. Right. Yeah. We're requesting a research. Yeah. Historical. We're asking for your hour and time to gain your opinion and advice in shaping the future of our organization. Okay, yeah. I think it's a couple of three days of the 20 week of the 21st. Right, yeah, there's yeah. Um, we always have opportunities to go to classes that that uh, Kansas County Association puts on and that this was a fundamentals of leadership and it was, it was one of the I'm not sure if that was that was the one downstairs probably. Yeah. And so anyway, uh, they sent me a certificate that I attended that. Okay. Uh, moving ahead, uh, we do not have any new resolutions to consider, so we'll drop down to other business. And this is to consider the approval of a contract with the Kansas State Health Care Commission for Employer Health in Insurance Program. So if you give us a little summary of that, Brad. Uh, we are uh, members of the Kansas uh, Health Care Commission's Employee Benefits 
program. We, we've been in that for our health insurance for employees for, I think, about nine years now. Uh, and it's a three-year contract. It rotates every three years. It's up for expiration this year. And this is a renewal for an additional three years for that program. Benefits to that are we are able to provide good health insurance uh, at a very reasonable cost to our employees, and we are in a pool of uh, last time it was like 340,000 other state and local employees about the can about the state of Kansas. So rather than trying to share those expenses in a smaller pool like we used to prior to that, so and they want my signature on behalf of the commission and also the signature of Barb on there. Um, and so we'll need a motion uh, to go ahead and enter this contract renewal. So move. I'll second it. Okay, we have the motion and the second to approve the contract renewal with the Kansas State Health Care Commission for Employer Health Insurance Program. Are there any other questions or comments? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, I don't believe we have anything else uh, other than I will make mention that we will be returning here uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. to um, have further discussions and try to um, come up with some final decisions for our budget. Is there a motion for adjournment? So move. I'll say it. We have the motion and the second for adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh,